Royce of Fire 9. Why you didn't holler at Joe? Joe had everything you needed. See, you didn't want that. So all this goddamn, see, I ain't with that, that selective hearing shit. Why you didn't hear what the fuck he was saying? And see, these motherfuckers responded, ah, oh, man, this shit, nah, man, this shit, y'all need a, 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 a lot of y'all celebrity motherfuckers, y'all so fucking lame. Like, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, y'all lame as fuck. Like, ah, man, he just kid. whoo, ah, man, whoo, what the fuck? Olive leaf extract is good for naturally lowering your blood pressure, regulating your diabetic blood sugar, lupus, fibroid, STDs, and a whole bunch of other shit that you're going to need in the bedroom, big home. Now, to get your bottle, you go to myoliveleaf.biz or call 612-567-3263. Get your shit together, big home. Welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I'm Ayo Canseco, and this is Are You Fucking Serious? Let me get right down to it. Uh, all my rap niggas, um, shout out to my nigga uh, FBA Montana. Uh, fuck with that nigga heavy. Birmingham is on the fucking map. Uh, all my local artists and shit like that, y'all need to tune in at this point. Whatever like that. I'm finna give y'all a little something that y'all need, whatever. Um... Also, everybody hit the uh, PayPal and shit like that. Show love. Um... Go to the fucking Instagram, but go to the Facebook Messenger to holler about uh, business and shit like that. All right, now that shit out the way. So I be having to set that shit up, you know what I'm saying? Ironically enough, that's what we talking about today. We talking about setups. Um, with this Drake and, um, the reason why I don't respect this Drake and uh, Pusha T shit is because if this shit was real, if you was really like this for real, be home, then you would have hollered at Joe. You know what I'm saying? You picking and choosing your battles, and I just have never known. I mean, I guess with Floyd Mayweather, she, I mean, but I think Floyd, that's that's more like he ain't never picked and choose his battle, whatever, like that. Like, that ain't you know what I'm saying. Like, he the only time is when, like, he wanted that motherfucker to take a fucking drug test and shit like that, make sure that motherfucker wasn't, you know what I'm saying, on that other shit. But that's not picking and choosing. That's being a businessman. I guess being a businessman. But when we start talking about lyrical, and I'm looking at all these motherfuckers reacting to it. Ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, why you come out and push, man? Nigga, they killed you, man. Ah, oh, man. They killed you, man. Ah, oh, man. You know not to come and drink. You see what he did to meet me or like this shit. Like, first of all, like, everybody that know me know that I'm saying Drake, my nigga, pure point blank. You know what I'm saying? I was the first nigga fucking with Drake since so far gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this is like, that's my nigga. But... We talk some real rap shit right now, be home. When we talk rap shit, you can't give this nigga no credit when Joe Budden was right there ready for everything that you wanted to do. You went at Meek and you handled that. That's all love. When Joe came with that shit, and I guess you can't really say it's about relevance because how in the fuck is Pusha T relevant? How was he more relevant than Joe Budden? At that time, he wasn't more relevant than fucking Joe Budden. It's the same fucking relevance. Lyricists. Lyricists are in the same place. If you're not J. Cole or fucking Kendrick Lamar, then you in the same fucking bubble. Royce the Five Nine, Joel Ortiz, and pretty much Slaughterhouse. All the lyricists are over here. Uh what Big Sean, even Big Sean is over there. You know what I'm saying? Like Big Sean, he over there with you know what I'm saying, Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. But right here we got Pusha T, Joe Button, Joel Ortiz, Royce the Five Nine. Why you didn't holler at Joe? Joe had everything you needed, see, you didn't want that. So all this goddamn, see, I ain't with that, that selective hearing shit. Why you didn't hear what the fuck he was saying? And see, these motherfuckers responded, ah, oh, man, this shit, nah, man, this shit, y'all need a, a, a lot of y'all celebrity motherfuckers, y'all so fucking lame. Like, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, y'all lame as fuck. Like, ah, oh, man, he just kid, whoo, ah, oh, man, whoo, what the fuck? What is that? Y'all lame as fuck. But the nigga ain't holler at Joe when Joe had all that shit for him. I still listen to Afraid. Know what I'm saying? I still listen to these songs with like that because this nigga was real deal rapping. I listen to the screwed up version. I think that Joe Budden need to come back out, but he ain't gonna do it though. He doing his podcast shit like that. He ain't really trying to do it like that. And they friends now shit like that too. 
But <clears throat> that's just bullshit. But let me get to the point. The point is this right here. I believe that, and y'all won't see it, whatever like that. But whenever, see, whenever, the reason I don't trust beef without blood is you can't tell if it's real or not. You know what I'm saying? Because it just it's just talking. Stitches and the game beef, it was real because blood was shed. Whenever there's blood shed in a beef, it's Safari Meat Meal. This is a real beef. Blood was shed. You know what I'm saying? With this shit right here, there's no blood being shed and no blood will be shed. We know this shit ain't gonna go nowhere different but in this realm of rapping who raps better. He would have got that same smoke with Joe Budden, but that's not the point. Um, so in my mind, knowing how fake this, y'all listen, knowing how fake this industry is, I believe that there was some talks behind the scene and everybody's in on it. That's just how I be feeling. Paranoid, whatever the fuck. I be feeling like the Breakfast Club, uh, they, they choose, they choose what, what channel they're gonna go through because you can't go through um uh the breakfast club and hot 97 because if you tell both of them what's going on the other one might know what i'm saying uh fuck that shit this is what happened like because everybody want to know you know what i'm saying what's really going on with them like that but you get a couple motherfuckers behind the scenes and say hey we're gonna do it like this how much you charge for this right here i'm gonna go up on you know what I'm the platform or maybe don't even don't even include hot, uh the fucking breakfast club or hot 97 it's just you and drake Y'all team, our team. Look, this is what we could do, goddamn. We could fake this beef, whatever. Trippy Red and 6 9 just did it. They just fucking did it. All the beef does is bring up both platforms. Like, both of y'all go up. Because everybody want to, oh, man. Controversy sells. And if you believe that there's never been a uh, falsified or a, a placated beef before, you're a fucking idiot. There's no way that a... Fucking wrestling was built off of this shit. What the fuck? It's what battle rapping is. This is what, the, what the fuck? Rap music is made to be aggressive. If you're not aggressive, then fake being aggressive. What the fuck? Like this is what like this is what it comes from. So why not fake the shit? So fuck it. We you know what I'm saying like push your teeth, you'll come up off this shit, and maybe the people on Drake team say, look, this would be a good look for us. To know what I'm saying, do this because we can promote something else. Maybe Drake's trying to put out something. Like, maybe they saw something in his last sales that they're trying to change. Like, let's know what I'm saying, we need another meat meal type situation. We That influx of, of um, money that we got during that back-to-back -back shit, that shit was crazy. Let's make that shit happen all over again. And it would seem as, as it's going over well. Because, oh, oh man, don't fuck with Drake. Like, everybody's, everybody's talking about this shit, whatever. And I just want to give y'all the perception of how I'm looking at it. Because, as I said, when there's no blood being shed, what the fuck is the issue then? Both of y'all know what this industry is at this point. You can talk, you can talk, y'all the fucking y'all. I don't give a fuck what type of... Because I watch, like, I'm into battle rapping. So, I, I know rappers who will uh, sell a fight for years on end. Um, this whole uh, K-Shine and... and, uh, and uh, from k and Danny Myers, the fucking, um, even right now, uh, the Lux and Averb shit didn't go down, so now they got Mook and Averb. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit that, you have to have a, um, what they call it? You gotta have some background, or you gotta have, like, a storyline. It has to be a storyline. This is what wrestling is. You have to have a storyline, so I don't give a fuck what happened back in the day. All this shit real. No, it's not real. They were building this shit up. And as a label, it's your job to come up with these kind of ideas. What better thing to tell an artist to do than, hey, we're going to plant this seed right now, and in a couple years, when your career starts to, uh, we can, you know what I'm saying, we can always act on this if we want to, if we can get the other side to, you know what I'm saying, to appease us, whatever. So, understand that this industry, there are too many people that get paid off of A-list artists to say that, Everybody's not trying to find a whatever kind of way they can find to stay relevant. They're going to do that shit. So I don't put it past these motherfuckers for this to be a fake fucking beef. And what we get out of it is good music. That's awesome. That's fine. But what I'm saying is I don't like all this faggot shit. I don't like the fake shit. I have to be honest. I don't like the fake shit. This shit right here to me looked like fake beef. It looked like this shit was made up 
Ah, we all smile and laugh, and I came at him because I didn't like the fucking Ghost Rain shit. Well, you kind of late on that one, Behold. You got an album coming out. This shit, Daytona. I listen to it, and, and put and another thing, the other reason I don't like niggas saying, oh, he killed him, is because this nigga, a Pusha T, was rapping on this fucking uh, infrared shit. This nigga was rapping on that shit. I don't like this shit. I don't like when this shit ain't equal. I don't like when it's not fair. So let's just, just make it what it is. So for you local artists, I want y'all to understand and look at what's going on. Um, big artists, big artists will do shit, publicity stunts. They'll do them to get their name up. You local artists don't even like talking to people. You local artists don't even like interacting online on your social media and shit like that. Your shit ain't interesting. What else are you bringing to the table? It's the difference between a gimmick and charisma. You know what I'm saying? Like, who are you? What do you represent? What do you bring to the table that no one else does? Do you have anything that makes you different? Are you unique in any way other than what the fuck your story is? Because your story is the same as his story, as his story, as her story. Like, I came up, had to get it from the mud, jugging and finessing. Uh, now uh, that fuck nigga try gonna get up with the uh, Draco. Like, what, what, what are you saying, dog? What are you saying? We've been hearing the same shit for almost three years, word for fucking word. I'm telling you that not big niggas, because the big niggas, a label knows that big niggas have to have, they have to be unique. If you're going to be big, you have to be unique. The reason why uh, 6 9 Trippy Red, Designer, Fetty Wap, you throw a little pump even, they had something different. The reason why people started dying in the head, these fucking colors, is because that's how hard they're trying to be different. At least they know. And they're, they're faggots, but at least they know that you have to be different. But those are gimmicks. Those are gimmicks. The reason why I kind of respected Uzi Vert when he first came out, academics brought him out to me, he did, is because it was different. It was, you know what I'm saying? It was different, whatever. The shit was, he had a, a song called Safe House or some shit like that. The shit was kind of different, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that it was going to bring forth all these faggots. But it did. So that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is crazy, but as far as local artists on the business side of this shit, you need to make yourself interesting. You're going to have to get out of this whole bubble of you not being able to interact with other artists and think with them. Because while you're on this local level, you can do a whole lot of shit that big artists can't do because you have room to fail. Because nobody's going to see you if you fall. You know what I'm saying? So if you fail at, you know what I'm saying, maybe doing having this idea with this artist from, you know what I'm saying, the other side of town, whatever like that, if it fail, it fail. Fuck it. Try something else. Try something else. Try with a Miami artist. Try with a Tennessee artist. Know what I'm saying? Try some shit. Just don't do no faggot shit. I'm talking about trying different things. Rapping in this way. Rapping in that way. Rapping with these artists. Try some different shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, local artists, you're, 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 you're too bland. Know what I'm saying? You don't have no spice on you. You don't have, know what I'm saying? It's just like the same shit. And you can promote as much as you want to. But if no one's getting anything out of your music but the same thing they get out of Thug music, uh, Pee Wee Longway music. You trying to emulate these Atlanta niggas, especially niggas from up north. Like, stop doing that shit. Like, be yourself. But what you're going to have to do is put some spice on the shit. You're going to have to do something different. You're going to have to, you may have to get a little uncomfortable. You're going to have to try something. Stop doing this same shit that you're doing. This game, this industry, at this point in time, is so fucking saturated that if you continue playing around, like you thinking that, oh, just because you're putting out music and you're promoting it, you think you're doing good and you're working, you're not. You're just spinning your fucking wheels. You should get some traction. If you're doing something for two years, you should see a change. Something should happen for you. Get your money together so that when you try shit, you can actually put it out there and see how the world feels about it and not just the niggas around the city. Because that's not going to change shit. If the nigga that work at Dollar General and that bitch that work at the Shell Station hear your shit, ain't shit going to change, whether they like it or not. Because they friend list is your friend list. They just going to share it to this nigga that, you know what I'm saying? They going to share it to your cousin page. Your cousin already know you rap. You need somebody to share that shit out there in Nova Scotia somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So you got to do something that big that it can touch people. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying as far as on that level and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Fake beef, I don't respect it. And I think this is fake beef. And I'm just going to bring it down like that. Big Fat Podcast. I am A.O. Conseguin. I say Big Facts, not Big Fat. Um, 
Y'all make sure y'all hit that PayPal, uh, all local artists. Y'all make sure y'all fuck with that goddamn PayPal. Matter of fact, hit me up on a Facebook message. Let's see if we can't get you promoted the right way. Are you serious? Let's rock.